uh, the Salton Sea used to be right here over this ledge, and now you see it way out there. There's been increasing salinity in the water and just a, a total bottoming out of the fish population. So for the fish eating birds, uh, it's been devastating. The Salton Sea is one of the last standing wetlands along the Pacific Flyway. It's a vital part, especially for migrating birds, uh, but this is not just an environmental issue. This is a human health issue. As the lake bed is exposed, more dust is kicked up. As there's more particles get into the air, that causes a serious public health hazard. It's a forgotten area. I classify this as a third world area. I mean, just in the last eight years that I've been here, it's changed dramatically. Do you think that people would be shocked to learn that there's a lake of this size in this condition in Southern California? Yes, I would, yes. It needs to have more attention brought to it. We only have this beauty once in our lives, you know? And once it's gone, it's gone. We're here in the southernmost corner of California at the Salton Sea. Reaching 15 miles across and 35 miles long, the Salton Sea is California's largest lake. It's home to small communities, more than 400 species of birds, and one of the country's largest agricultural industries. But due to changes in the management of the Colorado River, every day it is shrinking. I'm Lindsay Fent, reporting from the Salton Sea for the Water Desk. Very few fish still survive in the lake. The salinity has gone up. Right now it's at about 68 parts per thousand salt, whereas the Pacific Ocean is at 35 parts per thousand. Uh, fish, for all intents and purposes, are not able to live in the Salton Sea anymore. And the number of fish-eating birds that stop on the Salton Sea has dramatically declined. We met up with a group from the Audubon Society as they conducted their monthly bird survey. So there's some ducks flying. These are northern shoveler, so I'm gonna count by 50. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. Audubon has 14 points along the shoreline of the sea, and we're basically counting every individual of every species of water bird. 650 Bonaparte's gulls, bogu. 650. I just saw a great blue heron. Okay. And what have you guys been finding? Well, we still see large numbers of ducks and shorebirds, but a lot of the fish-eating birds, like cormorants, pelicans, those have declined. This was a huge wintering area for pelicans. We had upwards of 30,000 birds each winter. Right now, I mean, we're lucky if we get 20 birds on a count like this. Can you tell us a little bit why the sea gets saltier as it shrinks? Yeah, I mean, if you think about a cup of salt water evaporating. As the water level goes down, the salt doesn't evaporate. It just sits there. What's going to happen to the birds that aren't showing up here anymore? That's the question, right? I mean, what happens if you have 30,000 pelicans that are no longer at a place? You know, where are they? The lake is getting smaller, uh, but it's not dying. It's just changing, and the bird community is changing along with it. Birds are among the animals, they're the most resilient, and so their presence or absence at a place like the Salton Sea tells us a lot about the health of the ecosystem. You're going to see uh, some of the watermarks from uh, what used to be the ancient Kawea Lake. Mm -hmm. In 1905, when they were constructing some of the water canals, bringing water from the Colorado River, well, there was an engineer problem, and for almost 18 months, the water basically flow into the lake, creating what now is called the modern Salton Sea. Here is truly a miracle in the desert, a Palm Springs with water. In the 1950s and 60s, the Salton Sea was a celebrity hotspot full of luxury resorts and rowdy bars. Out here was unbelievable fishing. I mean, literally, you could put four or five hooks with a couple pieces of worm, you'd pull five fish out. People boating, fishing, water skiing, swimming. You could see thousands of white pelicans with the black wing tips, and they would just fill the sky, and it was like ribbons in, in the sky, how they just flow along. It was beautiful. But this started to change in the 1970s as the sea became saltier. Fish started to die, birds stopped coming. Now I'm, I'm lucky to see two or three white pelicans here. 
and it, it's a shame. It makes me cry. People stopped boating and swimming. Over time, the sea started to shrink as the fresh water evaporated. Um, it was like right here. You could literally put your feet in the water. Now you have to walk half a mile. In 2003, the Imperial Irrigation District agreed to send some of its water to nearby cities. This made farms more water efficient, but also meant less water was draining to the Salton Sea. We transfer water outside to San Diego and the Metropolitan Water District up in LA. So water that would ultimately end up at the Salton Sea is now going outside of this region. As a practice in conserving water in the Imperial Valley, our farmers are doing on-farm conservation measures. So they have switched to trip irrigation or sprinkler irrigation versus um, flood irrigation. One of the problems that it creates is that uh, when we conserve water on farm here, it reduces the water that goes into the salt of the sea. While heading off a water crisis in California's cities, water managers have inadvertently created an impending environmental disaster at the Salton Sea. What is it that we're looking at here? Well, we're looking at exposed lake bed that just a few years ago was covered with Salton Sea water. As the land is more exposed, it lends itself to uh, the potential of a lot more dust to be in the air. So what we have done is we've cut deep furrows perpendicular to the Salton Sea, and as the wind comes across, dust particles, some of them at least, will fall into these furrows and fall out of uh, circulation into the air, bringing the level of contamination down. Why is this dust particularly harmful from the lake bed? All of the dust is going to have large amounts of salt. Those salt impacts to crops cause damage. They basically suffocate the crops. To the human health aspect, though, the dust particles themselves are so fine that they could potentially get into your lungs. They can cause respiratory issues. It's just the small size of the dust particles themselves that cause the potential for human health issues. The state of California agreed to restore the sea, but funding issues and bureaucratic red tape have stalled the project for more than 15 years. The state of California has plans for restoration, building levees, berms, to re-flood that area that has been left high and dry. What we have today is the bottom of the basin. We met many people here who have their own ideas of what could save the sea. Our plan is slightly different, and that's to keep the sea as it is, and then cover 50% of the sea with functional habitat islands that are also restoring the water quality. The Salton Sea may never be what it once was, but if nothing is done to restore it, the worst is yet to come for the communities that surround it and the wildlife that depend on it. I'm ashamed that the powers that be can't see the beauty and the potential of making the best recreation area in Southern California. Many here are still hopeful for its future, but it will take adequate funding, political will, and serious creativity to save it. I'm Lindsay Fent, reporting for The Water Desk.